welcome to the metal voice once again you know a professional i, I don't oh. even know how many bands this guy has been he's been oh in every gosh. band and not only has he been in every band but this guy is a true gentleman uh loved by all the fans great musician i don't even know what more i could just spend all day sort of like patting you patting you back there uh rudy thanks for joining us oh i thought somebody else was going to be on the show <laughs> <laughs> It's been too long, Rudy, and it's always a pleasure to have you on the Metal Voice. So. Yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys said so many nice things that I thought it was you talking about somebody. You know, who's this guy? I like to meet this guy. <laughs> I'm going to start things off just by saying that. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we interviewed yeah. you a few times, but like seven years ago, I went back to an interview and I go, I was really, mm. I, I, I don't know if the word is aggressive with questions, but man, you handle every question yeah. with such ease. You are such a pro, a gentleman, like, I, and, and, and I don't know. I, I guess it's the experience. It's just the experience. Yeah. Well, don't expect that today. I am really <laughs> mad as hell. <laughs> <laughs> the other side of Rudy Sarge. Sarge. Right. The dark side. That's right. The dark side. <laughs> All right. There we go. So, you know, Boom. Like you... I, I, I want to promote this. So yeah. right okay. off, off the rails, you know, pick it up. Everybody yes, yeah. still get it. Yeah. And me and Alan love, love this book. And we've oh, loved it I for as long as we've had it. I keep rereading yeah. it. Yep. Biggest, here's the big news. Here's the big news that, well, it's not news anymore. It's old. But mm. Rudy Sarzo mm. is the new member or the oldest member of Quiet Riot. And he's back in the band. <laughs> yeah. Tell and us about oldest, being the newest member. <laughs> well, I am the, the oldest new member <laughs> of the band. <laughs> I, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I first joined the band in 1978 and it was the first band that I experienced a collective consciousness, meaning that we all listened to the same music. We were, we all wanted to attain the same goals uh, with the recording industry and our careers and everything. And usually that happens in your garage band. You know, when you're a kid, you're 16 and you listen to your favorite bands and you get together with your buddies because that's what, you know, you know, this is like, okay, you know, I'm either going to be in a baseball team or a football team or be in a rock band, you know, and, and I, you know, so you have all these things in common and somehow, somewhere you grow up and you go to college and you, you graduate and you go separate ways, but always that, that garage band you had, you, there were so many aspirations and, and so many dreams, you know, unfulfilled. Now, in my case, Quiet Riot was basically that consciousness of that first band that you get in there. Everybody feels the same thing about, you know, how what we want to do with music, you know. Uh, in my case, I had gone to Los Angeles to find people like that, to find a band like that. And I found it in Quiet Riot. And... So we were talking about 1978, you know, with Kevin DeBro and, and Randy Rhodes. And then 79, Randy leaves Ozzy. I mean, leaves Quiet Riot to join Ozzy. And then a couple of years later, you know, after they finish uh, recording uh, Blizzard of Oz and Diary of the Mad Men, I get the call from management. And I mean, that's a long story, but, you know, it's in the book. But, so, but I'm going to go into, I join Ozzy. And once I join Ozzy, uh, again, I'm playing with, with Quiet Riot Consciousness, Randy Rhodes, you know, here he, again, you know, we, we are in tune to the same frequency as we were raised with music and also our environments where, the, you know, he grew up in California, I grew up in Florida, both sunny places. We like, you know, we like heavy, but still not gloom and doom music, you know, especially back, back in the 70s. And prior to that, after Randy left Choir Riot to join Ozzy, I kept playing with Kevin and his own band called Dubro. And, and I was living with him right up until the time that I joined Ozzy. So I always, you know, maintain some sort of the Choir Riot consciousness with either, either with Choir Riot with Randy, uh, Kevin with Dubro, and then back with Randy and Ozzy Osbourne. You know, and so what happens is Randy dies, he passes away, and I lost that consciousness. 
I lost that contact, but that familiarity, my family, you know, of that everything we we were, you know, it was all copacetic. And then I get a call while I was still a member of Ozzy from Kevin to come down and record one track for a possible future record, you know, and we're talking about 40 years ago this year. You know, the making yeah, of me- me- yeah, yeah, the right now, making yeah, the uh, the making of mental health. There you there go. go. Thank you. This is the original Thank you. dressing, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And uh I was uh I I yeah, I said sure, you know, I'll I'll come down and record Thunderbird, which actually I used to play that song with Kevin Indubro, you know, because he wrote it for, for Randy after he left Quiet Riot to join Ozzy. And then after he passed away. Kevin rewrote the lyrics at the end a little bit to, to fit more of what it was, a, a tribute to, to Randy's uh, life, you know, and their friendship. And so I recorded that song. And then what I had lost with Randy passing, I found again in that recording session. You know, I walk in and there's Frankie, who I, I had been playing at that time in 1982. I met him in 1972 on my wow. birthday on my birthday and we started playing together right after that so i have been playing with frankie on and off for 10 years we went to la together we lived together in la and, and the whole thing i i talk i you know when 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 choir Riot was looking for a drummer to towards the end of that of that uh randy rose version of the band i i recommend the frankie he came down and you know, that's another story. But anyways, they were aware of him. As a matter of fact, when when Ozzy, right before he went to England and he already had Randy and he had Dana Strum in the band, Frankie was the drummer that Randy recommended. So they rehearsed. Wow. Ozzy, Randy, Frankie, and Dana Strum. They did rehearsals. And then they, that's another story. But <laughs> we got like five <laughs> other stories going on here. Yeah, but go yeah, ahead. Yeah, I, <laughs> story. I, I know. I know. Actually, I, I recently did one of one of my uh, sixty years of stars of uh, Monsters of Rock radio shows with Dana Strum, and he talks about that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it was really great to share with, with the uh, listeners what Dana was very inf- instrumental in putting the whole thing together for Ozzy. You know, bringing Randy in. You know, and uh, so I walk into the room, and there's Frankie. You know, my best friend. Uh, there's Kevin. And Carlos, I had known, you know, casually from, from, from the circuit. But anyways, we go in and we, we lay down Thunderbird. I was still a member of Ozzy. And then they, uh, they ask, uh, you know, the producer and the guys, hey, you know, we, we, have like, we have like three hours left in the session. See, the, I, I, we track very fast because I used to play Thunderbird and right. Dubrow. So, I, you know, that was my baseline. I, I, knew, I knew the song very well. So uh, we tracked it fast, two takes, and then it's like, uh, oh, do you remember Slake Black Cadillac? Well, it's been a while. Let's go over a couple of times, and we tracked it again. We tracked Slick Black and a couple of other songs that are on Metal Health, but were songs from, from the Dubrow period of Kevin's songwriting. Uh, Slick Black Cadillac is the only song that made it from the uh, Randy Rhodes Choir Riot version of the band into the Metal Health record. And that's a song that Kevin Kevin wrote. That song. So it, it fits you like a, a a glove, right? You were used to all these songs, and uh... yeah, yeah. But but most important, it I found my familiarity again, my family, my consciousness, my collective consciousness. You know, here, here's, here's Frankie. I've been playing with him for ten years. He was my <laughs> mentor, and uh, and you know, being a rhythm section, you know, he taught me how to be a part of the rhythm section. And because he, he was way more experienced when we met in 1972 than, than, than I was, you know, I was basically playing in the Miami Cuban party circuit. while mm-hmm. Frankie was already opening up for major bands. As a matter of fact, when I first saw him the day before uh, his band was opening up for David Bowie, Ziggy Stardust tour at Pirates wow. World. And that's how I first got to see him, and I was blown away. I mean, there's a whole story how, of how we met, but uh, anyways, it's another podcast. Uh, so, so yeah, so you know, coming home it, to me is coming home. You know, every time I play one of those songs, it's like, 
you know, it's like the essence, the spirit of how the songs came about, the story behind the songs, you know, who they were about, what they were about. It all comes back. It's not that it even comes back. It's still there. It's been there all along. Rudy, it's just kind of like tuning into it. You know? Rudy, I want to point out, and I want people to understand this, like there was Quiet Riot, Randy mm -hmm. Rhodes era. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then there was Dubrow, which played up to 100 shows as Dubrow, yeah. rotating musicians. Yeah. And yeah. then there was the Quiet Riot classic era, we'll call it, right? Yeah, yeah. And the first two albums, this is, mm. this is your history. This is how far back mm. you, you mm. were involved in Quiet I want people to understand. Yeah. From Quiet yeah. Riot 2, there's a bootleg version, by the way, mm -hmm. did appear on it, but you didn't play on it, but that's when mm. you were in the band. That's yeah. how far back. Was, yeah. By the way, yeah. what was Quiet Riot 2 originally called? Do you know? That's trivia for you. I know. That's, you know, that's way before me. When I joined the band, it was Quiet Riot. I mean, you know, you can name... I can, I can tell you what it is. I'll give you, okay. I'll tell you right now. Was it Little Women? No, it was called Second and Ten. Second you mean the album cover? The album, the album was no, called, no, no, that's no. Second and Ten because they were in, oh. yes. I thought you meant the band Choir Riot. No, 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 no. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. It was album. called Second and Ten. But in yeah. Japan, there was no yeah. football. So they go, this is not going to work. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, yeah, Second and Ten, uh, you know, second record, 10 songs. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we were supposed to be, you know, second, what is it, uh, in football. Uh, yeah, down, yeah. second and 10 yeah. downs. Yeah, like in down, 10 yards yeah. to go. Hence the ten reason why go. the football yeah. players. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, yeah. You know, I had just joined the band. Mm. And when you join the band, you don't ask a whole lot of questions. You just kind of like go with the <laughs> flow, you know. Yeah. So there was a lot of questions in my mind as regarding that, that album cover, you know. And, you know, a lot of stuff, it's like, it was basically the only time that I, 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 I asked as to why am I doing the album cover if I'm not in the band? And they gave me enough information that actually is Reveal and Kelly Garnes, who actually played on the record, on, uh, on his book, information about the incident that That's led to me. him. Yeah, that yeah. led to him. Yeah, it was basically, uh, yeah, yeah. So what, I'll yeah. tell everybody, like, I've interviewed him many times. Yeah. Yeah, it was a gun that was fired in the air, uh, you know, claimed, you know, and that's kind of what got him kicked out of the band. You know, he was drunk. He fires up in the air and his big thing. Uh, it's all in his book. Great book, by the way. Wonderful yeah, great book. book. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, no Ke Kelly Gardy remains a friend of the band. He remains very great close guy. with us. As a matter of fact, he, uh, when we played Vegas, what was it New Year's Eve? Yeah. He got to a place like Black Cadillac with us. It's probably somewhere out there in the uh, in, in the <laughs> In the interweb out there, <laughs> YouTube. Yeah. So like, but, uh, no, no, no. He's, he's, he's you know, we're, we're, we'll get along. We're all family. And uh, bef way, way before Kevin passed away, uh, Kelly and him had made things up and they were friends and, and hung out together. As a matter of fact, it was Kelly who actually, uh, after Kevin was, uh, was not seen for a few days, he's the one who went to Kevin's house and discovered that he had uh, passed away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so now you, you said Jimmy was saying earlier. You know, you played through with everybody, like White Snake, Dio, Manic mm. Eden, Project Dryer, everybody under the sun. Why we joined Choir Riot now? Besides, oh, it's very simple. Every single band that I've ever been, including Ozzy, there's always a little bit of Choir Riot that I bring with me. As a matter of fact, if you look at Ozzy, it's two guys from Quiet Riot and, and then Ozzy, the guy from Black yeah. Sabbath in the middle, you know. I mean, for that period, you know, from the yeah. uh, from the performances that we did, Blizzard of Oz and uh, Diary of M. Admin tours. And uh, so why is, as some, well, first of all, the main reason why I'm back in the band is because Frankie invited me. He says before he passed away to return to the band. So when your best friends ask you to do something, you know, I needed to honor Frankie. I need to honor. I need to be that guy on stage who honors the legacy and the memory of the band members who have passed on. It's my responsibility. This is the first time that I actually leave the house to go on the road every weekend we're booked solid through through the rest of the year, every single week, 
Wow. And thank God for that. Oh, thank God for that. Yeah, that's, that, that is wonderful. But now I leave with a mission. I'm not just going out there, you know, to uh, just to play a bunch of songs and, you know, and, and, and whatever financial gains. No, I have a mission. My mission is to celebrate the legacy and the memory. That's amazing. That's of, amazing. My, of my bandmates. So, so it's so, a whole, it, it, it's, it's a whole, you know, you, I deal with things easier on the road now. Things, you know, like delays, planes. Okay, don't worry because I'm on a mission. <laughs> and <laughs> we're going we're gonna to get there and we're going to make it. And we're going to get up on stage and we're going to kick ass and celebrate choir ride. So what's yeah. this Tory lineup? Well, who do you, who's in the band right now? Oh, so in the band, well, it's actually pretty much uh, the same band, except for Chuck Wright, uh, as when Frankie was there, you know, when he was alive and uh, leading the band. Uh, it's Alex Grossi, who was actually picked by Kevin DeBro when the when the the reunited Choir Riot ceased to exist in 2003. He played on uh, uh, rehab, right? He played on rehab. Well, I don't know when when that was released, but we we did two records. We did Alive and Well, and uh, and the second one that has like uh, Adam and Eve. Yep, with, guilty uh, pleasures. Guilty pleasures. That one. Yeah, yeah. Right we here. Too. I got yeah, everything here. I got everything here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need? What do you need? <laughs> okay. I'm go here. Ahead. Very soon, I'll, I'll ask you for something. Okay. okay. And so what happens is the band broke up. I didn't leave the band. The band just ceased to exist <laughs> at one point. And, uh, and then, you know, we went off separate ways. I, um, I did a tour with Inve. Kevin did uh, some touring with, like, the Voices of Rocks things. And, and, and then uh, he put something together and band together he puts a band together and alex goes and became his guitar player so so alex has been part of this whole family for over 20 years now he's actually the third quiet riot guitar player first you got randy and you got carlos and now you, you got alex you know um jizzy jizzy the band our band quiet riot were fans of love hate kevin loved jizzy's voice and i know that because he would tell me and there's plenty of photos out there on the internet with the two of them together so they hung out in hollywood and uh and jizzy's been in the band for a long time he he left for a little while then he came back but he's been there and jizzy is an amazing singer not only that but he gets he gets the whole quiet riot consciousness because coming from the sunset strip just like we did he he gets it he understands he's part of that you know, so it's very important to have people who understand what we're doing here and how this whole thing came about. Because he, he walked the same Sunset Strip as we all did with his band, Love Hate. And then we got Johnny Kelly, who uh, Alex knew from, uh, or Johnny Kelly, okay, uh, he, he's formerly the drummer for typo negative, we talk about this, uh, Johnny and I, you know, having mm -hmm. been in the band typo and then, you know, losing a band member, a brother, you know, and, you know, we, we talk about it a lot, you know, it's, uh, it's because, you know, we understand that, you know, and also, you know, with Johnny is, is he was handpicked by Frankie. Oh, wow. To, yeah, he was asked by Frankie to come in, you know, and especially when Frankie was going through chemo and alternative uh, uh, medication for, for, yeah, for, for cancer. So, you know, these are people that just, they are, they're supposed to be here because they were asked to be here by members of the band. And I, I we all go out, go out there. We understand what this whole thing is about. And, and, we feel blessed to be playing together. You know, Frankie is not here. Kevin's not here. Randy's not here. But the people who are here really care about what we're doing. And you said you've known Frankie for a very long time. And the rhythm section is so important. How would you describe Frankie's playing in Cryer Riot during your time there? 
That's a really good question. I uh, and I and I it, and, and I knew this from the very beginning because if you listen to any uh, to the mental health record, uh, you you you'll see that even though Randy's not there, somebody else takes over that 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 spot. You know the focus. You know, and um, in most bands, it's usually the guitar player or the singer. And in this band, uh, the mental health version of Quiet Riot was Frankie Benelli. Uh, a lot of the songs yeah. begin with with drum intros, you know, all of that. So I I think Frankie was definitely for the mental health version of the band. He was a signature sound style that he brought in. He really great arranger, you know. I mean, I I, I know all of this for, about Frankie because I worked with him for, for such a long time, even prior to Quiet Riot, and he always brought certain qualities about his playing that really would take any band to the next level. As a matter of fact, when I, I was touring in, sh in the city, in the, sh in the Chicago area uh, in the 70s, and I kept saying, we got to get Frankie up here. And, and sooner or later, we did. Yeah, we got Frankie, he joined the band. And then uh, we exhausted all the possibilities of playing in Chicago. And then we went to, it was my second trip to Los Angeles. But this time I went there with, with a, basically a full band. And we kept playing. We had a band. We lived together in, in Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you find that, and, and I love Chuck Wright, you know, in his work that he mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. Do you find mm -hmm. that there's this re rejuvenated excitement over Quiet Riot since you joined? You know, like, it, it, the, like I got excited. I heard that you're rejoining. I got excited. I go, it's like an original, it's kind of almost an original member joining the band, right? Okay. Wait. When you say almost original member... <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm just trying to say, you know, I mean, you replaced Kelly Garney, right? Yeah, but then again, that would be saying that Frankie Benali is not a, an original member of of the of the Choir Riot Metal Hell. You know, you, you know, you it, know it, is, it is, it is, it is the classic, and the, you know, the, yeah. the, the Randy era. Well, so yeah, it is. You can dispute it. You can dispute it. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, you know, well, let me give you my perception because everybody has a perception. This is the way I look at it. There were two albums that were released only in Japan. And the reason why bands used to do that in, in those days, it was basically kind of like releasing an a independent EP. You know, uh, 40 years ago, actually 45 years ago, when those records were released, the, the, the Randy Rose version of Quiet Riot, uh, Billboard magazine, they didn't even have a chart for that, for for you know imports or or things that were released in japan they didn't care <laughs> billboard is about the united states yeah if you look true. put it this way if you don't have a record deal in the united states you got nothing you you're not a recording you artist exist. yeah it's kind of like you know the old joke or yeah we're huge in japan you know <laughs> yeah you know it, i mean that's 40 something years ago right as a matter of fact the uh, the punchline of the spinal tap movie is that that they were huge, they came put the band together and they were huge in Japan, right? <laughs> 40 years ago, now it's a whole different scenario because Japan has their own uh, Japanese cult, uh, domestic heavy metal band, and they are tremendous. I mean, they, they, they're world class musicians. You have Loudness, which was a pioneer of that, right? You, you have the bees. You know, pioneers of that, and uh, so it's 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 not the same scenario as it was forty years ago. So technically, technically, the clock starts with Metal Health because that's when a band under the name Quiet Riot got signed to a we were we were Pasha Colombia. I got a contract that I signed along with Carlos and Kevin and Frankie that disputes the fact that I am not an original member. <laughs> there you right, go, Jerry. Right, right. In oh, your face, okay. baby. All and right, right. Again, geez, geez. And then again, that's my perception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you know, um, maybe, I, I think you mean it more like they were a garage band when they released the first two albums and they really became a professional band when you guys no. signed with Metal Health, right? No, not really. See, when I spoke about garage bands, I spoke about the consciousness of a garage band. Mm. Uh, with Randy Rose, no, I mean that band was a local, was a local band, huge local band, huge, big, but could not get to the next step. 
was just to sign a a U.S. record deal. Gotcha. Okay. So, so you're booked for the rest of the summer. You're saying, well, but for the rest of the year, it sounds like. Uh, is there any anything else going on be, besides your commitment New to music? the Quiet Riot? No. Oh, okay. No, he's booked. Yeah, he, Alan, he's booked. It, I mean, he's just booked. What else is he going to do? Nobody else is calling. Hey, Rudy. <laughs> well, what about an album? What about a new album? Of Quiet Riot? Crow, like we said. So. Yeah, they they have called, uh, and I, I graciously tell them, you know, I am I'm, I'm devoted to Quiet Riot. This is all my energy and focus is just like it was. See, every time I was in Quiet Riot, that's all I did. Okay. I didn't do other stuff. So why should I start doing that again now? You know, again, I mean, you know, uh, I've been doing projects. Gotcha. See, to me, Quiet Riot is not a project. That's your home. It's my home. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. What about new music in Quiet Riot? I hear there's some new music on the way. Yeah. What's happening there? That's that. You know what? It's so good that you're going to have to wait to hear it. <laughs> Because, because you're not gonna. But there believe, is new music. There's new music. You're not gonna believe how good it is because you're gonna think it's a hype. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna tell you how good it is because you're gonna think I'm, I'm lying. I don't think you're lying. I'm gonna anxious <laughs> to hear it. Though. Well, how about this? Yeah. Is it gonna come out within in the next year, or is it gonna be like? Uh, we are planning on yeah. Hopefully, this yeah, the sooner the better. Okay, that's a good answer. Okay, <laughs> I hear even Who's Kevin Dubrow is going to be a, a guest appearing on a track. Uh, in a quantum reality, everything is possible. <laughs> Multiple multiverse, multiverse. <laughs> and, and again, Rudy, you know you're a very spiritual person. I'm, I'm watching mm. TV the other day, and here, here's uh, Teresa from the Long Island Medium. She said, I'm going to go see my friend Rudy. Rudy, who is she talking about? You, Rudy Sarzo. Yeah, but, Teresa, I love Teresa. Have you Teresa. ever had a reading with her? Is there anything? Yeah, interesting enough, yeah, I, you know, it's, I knew Teresa for a while. I mean, maybe two or three years before she even gave me an unexpected reading it was at her home and um, with her then husband, uh, uh, Larry, and my wife, you know, it was just family dinner sitting around and then as we're having dessert, it just it just happened. It, it was reading. It was very, very, very beautiful. And uh, but I, I, you know, I, I follow her. I believe in her and her readings. Uh, I've seen miracles uh, at her events. That I see people just like reconnecting with their, with their family, with their, they have passed on and. It's, it's really a moving experience. And it's amazing. I mean, <laughs> okay, I am a musician. I get up on stage with a bass and I got amplifiers and I got three, you know, depending on the band, three or four other guys with me to share that whatever stage fright you might have or, or like, you know, that performance, right? The eyeballs. The eyeballs are distributed evenly, or whatever you know, with, with that, from the audience to with other people. With Teresa, it's just her. It's just her and microphone, and there's a camera crew that follows her around, so they can in, in an arena. Uh, her image is projected on screen. And she's just and, waiting to receive. Uh, and it's just I mean, you know, and it's exactly the same person on stage as off stage. It's her. She's it's, yeah, what you see is what you get, and and TV show that's her, you know, and, and it's just amazing. You see, she's a pure, pure human, pure meaning her soul is pure, you know, she's she's wonderful. She's a dear friend. Nice, nice. So I guess sort of to come full circle here, the tour is in May. Then we got June dates and July dates with Quiet Riot. It's just nonstop all the way through. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, a lot of stuff that you're reading. Uh, we have a lot of a lot of dates that we're 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 sharing with other groups that they uh, they might be you know the headliners. So mm -hmm. they have priority as to when the dates are going to be released. Okay. So there's a lot of dates that are not even posted yet. So okay. like I said, we, we're we're playing every every week. Every it's week we're, we're out there doing, yeah, it is amazing. It's really a blessing, you know, but, but I really thank you for, 
for uh, for sharing that information with your with your watchers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, watchers. Viewers, <laughs> watchers, viewers. 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 <laughs> uh, is there anything you want to uh, promote? You know, from a quiet ride perspective or anything else? Uh, you know, you have so many fans, Rudy. They just always love hearing from you. Yeah, you know the fans. And to me, it's it's. You know, I am. We are so appreciative of, of the fans. You know, coming to the shows and and sharing with us the experience of, of uh, celebrating the legacy of the band. And, you know, I mean, I see a lot of uh, fans that, that I've known for decades who were original fans, you know, back in the mental health days, you know, as we tour America. And it's so wonderful to see them, you know, supporting what the consciousness of Choir Riot is all about. Right. Great. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're home in uh, both sense of the word, uh, home in the band and the home, uh, where you are today and uh man it's just great news to see you back and and, and with this beautiful mission you have to honor the three fallen mm. heroes uh in the choir riots history so thank you so much thank you rudy it's been a pleasure you know when the new Always. music comes out we'll do this again yeah absolutely and then uh, we can you know i want to hear your opinion about the songs because right. you know sure. at, at the end of the day that's the most important thing it's all about the uh, the listener you know that i mean bet. yeah thank you thank you so much for your thanks time. rudy always a pleasure thank you god bless take care bless. bye-bye